hi guys and welcome back to another video if you're new here my name is Kim I currently live in Japan where I travel and do lifestyle videos so here you'll find videos about travel food culture just anything and everything that you can think about about traveling and my life in Japan I hope you'll consider liking and subscribing with that being said, let's jump into this video. So recently, I have concluded my South Korea travels. I have been to Seoul, Daegu, and Busan. Not in that order. I'm going to go ahead and put a card right here so you guys can check out uh, that playlist if you're interested in any of those areas. And it was crazy. Even though I was in South Korea, all those places offered various kind of culture, I would say, that was unique to each particular city. Uh, so that was very interesting. I really enjoyed all the cities. I don't know if I have a favorite. I'm more of a water and like nature, ocean kind of girl. So, but I'm also city. So I'm thinking if i had to choose i would probably say busan was my favorite place i think out of all of my travels busan i've grown the most because i got to do a lot of things that i wasn't aware that i was fearful of so busan actually gave me an opportunity to grow which that was kind of cool so i probably would say busan was my favorite place but like i said go ahead and click here if you have not seen all my south korea travels and check those out from Instagram especially, I get a lot of questions of people asking, how exactly can they travel to South Korea or to Asia? So today, I'm going to tell you exactly how to do it. Every country has their own rules and regulations on how to do this. So today, we're going to be talking about from a standpoint of an American. Now, this little blue book gives you, it's like the golden ticket. It allows you to go pretty much every and anywhere without a visa. And South Korea is no different. So as an American traveling to South Korea, you literally just get there and you're given a 90 day visa that you can do. Of course, there is many different visas, but today we're going to be focusing on just visiting, visiting visa for 90 days. So you book your travels, you book your trip, you get there, and it's like boom, bang, and boom, you're done. That's pretty much it. So once you, it's, if you haven't traveled before, it's going to be like going through immigration. They'll make sure that you're a legit person, so they'll take your folder, do your fingerprints. They'll tell you how long you have to stay in the country, and you're just on your way. Now, this is the important part. Traveling overseas as a foreigner, it gets a little bit tricky. You want to make sure that you have certain things. So money is one major thing that you want to make sure you have. You need the currency of where you're going. Now, don't be like me. Click right here. You'll see in my Daegu vlog, guys. When I went to Daegu, I got stranded because I did not have any cash with me. So you want to have some kind of currency exchange of the country where you're going. U.S. dollars is also pretty much accepted everywhere. So you want to have some reserve of that as well. But try to have that currency. And at the airport, you can always um, exchange those currency for whatever country you'll be in. So you want to go ahead and have that. Once you get there, you want to have an unlock phone because you're going to need to know where you're going, right? You need directions. You, you want to go and explore. So you're going to need an unlock phone. The cool thing about these airports is you also have the possibility to buy SIM cards. And these SIM cards are going to be needed to go into an unlock phone. And they can range from anywhere from two days to two weeks to a month. It just depends. And then you just pay as you go. Now, I recommend everyone that's traveling overseas to make sure you have your unlock phone and go ahead and get your sim card immediately as soon as you step foot outside of the immigration get your luggage go straight to that counter and get your sim card from there you might have already arranged um pick up from your hotel some people like to travel on a budget but as a woman for me is safety is a very high priority so i like to travel on a budget but safety comes before the budget at all times because although this book is also a blessing to us it's also a curse because you find that when you go to these countries because you're an american you are seen as a target to oh they have money they're rich when 
that might not be the case. You know what I'm saying? So you want to make sure, and it's cool because I used to be in banking and there's a thing called ransom insurance. I usually have to sell ransom insurance to people who are traveling overseas and people always be like, what, why would I need ransom insurance? But one of the points that they teach you on how to sell that insurance is because when you hear the statistics of how many people actually get kidnapped for a ransom because of this book is like crazy it's mind-blowing you're like why does everybody have this insurance but anyways i'm going into another topic so safety is very important for me so with that being said so you want to either arrange for your hotel to come and pick you up or you want to make sure you have like a uber or a lyft i would say you could use a taxi from the airport me personally i don't like sometimes some airports you have like guys pushing you to go into a certain taxi and stuff i don't want to do that because paranoid hello i don't know who is working with who i'm just no so you want to do a uber or lyft or a grab or whatever it is that they have going on in that country or best situation attack your hotel it might be a charge it might not be to have to arrange transportation to come get you from the airport that's the safest bet and that's the route i try to go at all times um so that's important and while you're leaving from the airport to your hotel you want to have that phone on to make sure that they're going the right way so you know what's going on at all times the next important thing to do when you're traveling is you want to travel like the locals right so in south korea for instance you have what is called a tea money card so you could get this card from any gas station any convenience store stuff like that you could you could get it from there you could get it from the, no you can't get it from the train station i've never seen it there and what it is, it works like cash, guys. So you just load this card up. You could use it to pay for food. You could use it to pay for transportation. You could use it, so on, transportation on the train, transportation in the bus. The only place I didn't see it used was in the taxi. That was all cash. So you want to spend on your T-Money card. And the cool thing about this card is that, let's say you put, and I'm making up numbers. So let's say you put 100 US on there, right? And when you're leaving, you still have $10 on there. You could actually go back to the store, any store, and you could redeem the cash off that and they'll hand it to you. And you could just keep the card. So whenever or if I decide to go to South Korea again, I'll have my card. I'll just top up. I'll be ready to go. So you want to get that. You can also choose to do your um, single day ticket. It's just that it's a little bit more expensive. So why wouldn't you save the money, invest in the card, and go wherever you need to go. The next good thing to have is I have this little pouch. And this is where I keep my card. I keep my passport in here as well and all my important stuff. As soon as you enter that hotel, guys, you want to grab that passport, grab a all it depends on where you're going south korea is a very safe country you might want to take off your jewelry or whatever it is and lock it up in that hotel safe because at the end of the day it's better to be safe than sorry especially for our females uh, it's, it's it's just for security reasons why you might want to do that so as soon as you get there you want to lock away that passport in that safe write down that number to the safe though you don't want your passport to be stuck in there so you'll have it so with traveling you know you have a lot of expectations you think you're going to do all these great things right you have this crazy itinerary of all the things that you want to do newsflash get ready for the unexpected Something always happens, guys. Go ahead and check out this clip. So guys, we came to the fish market. So this is the second thing that we're doing today. Hello. And uh, it's just been a F-A-I-L. But that's okay. We came to the fish market. Unfortunately, it's closed. Um, I think earlier it, it was raining. So I think that probably has some effect on what happened here tonight grab some food and still enjoy the night we'll probably then go to rainbow bridge tonight and see just switch some stuff around so so as you can see my videos they never go as planned there's always something happening whether it's rain that wherever you're going is closed you're getting lost guys we thought that we found the bridge but well, look wrong bridge so, on we go. She mad. Um, it can be 
that the it's so many factors that happens when you're traveling so you have to be able to adjust things can't be as rigid and that comes back down to who you're traveling with i try to travel with smaller groups of people people who are like-minded like me because it, it's so it's already so stressful you want to have like-minded people who are able to adjust and switch plans around because it's very important Things never go as planned. As you can see from those videos, those clips that I've included, something always come up. So be flexible. You have to be flexible or else you won't have a good trip. You understand me? You will not enjoy your trip. So things you want to do before, after, and during your trip is for one, you want to have a copy of that passport. You want to take a copy of your passport page, keep it in your files, um, whether it's going to be to your parents or somebody at home, but you need a backup copy of that file just in case it does get lost. Something happens, you can call, hey, so-and-so happens, they can fax it over to you. You can carry it on with you if you want, but I think the safest bet is to have somebody at home have a copy or have several copies as your backup. The next thing you want to do is always, always, always have people know where you are at all times. So if you're planning to travel to Egypt, I don't know, wherever you're planning to travel, your whoever it is that is your core person in your life needs to know that hotel address. They need to know where you're staying, your room number, the phone number to the hotel, your um, airport information, like your travel information, just in case something happens. And you want to check in with, with that person as regularly as possible. So because you, again, you're going to stand out. You look, you may, well, it depends on where you're going, but you may look different. Or once you open that mouth, that language, people are going to know, you know, you know, you know. So you want to be careful with that as well so you want people to know hey this is where i'm going this is my itinerary for these days and this is what i plan to do that's very important you want to make sure you have your currency um we talked about that already getting that at the airport now when you're getting that currency you want to break that cash down you don't want the highest denomination you want every single denomination in that currency that way and also you don't want to take a wads of cash so you want to separate your cash just in case. So for your taxi, you want to make sure you have some wants. Just just don't be flashing. You want to be as incognito as possible while still having a great experience. Um, so you don't want a lot of cash. You want to make sure that you have that phone. We talked about that already, that unlocked phone and um, your phone. You want to have a power bank. Very, very important. You want to make sure that phone is always charged. And if it does die, you do have a backup for um, in case you need to make a call or whatever it might be. You need to know the emergency number. What is the um, for help? You need to know certain, certain. You want to know just a basic basic knowledge of how to say certain things for wherever you're going so um a good tool to have for that is google translate you want to have google translate when you're traveling just in case you need to communicate and you're going to need to communicate and the person doesn't speak um english or whatever language it is that you speak so those i would say are the most important things to do when traveling also you want to make sure your hotel is not sketchy you want to make sure that it's a place where it's safe personally again i don't when it comes to safety i'm not going to skim on that book that's not i will skim on my food i will skim on everything else but when it comes down to that safety i'm not playing it's only one me right so most hotels have where you cannot just enter the hotel there's always a guard to the elevator you, your room key has to be touched before they can actually leave the first floor so you want to make sure those safety areas and make sure you research the location don't want to be oblivious you want to be aware of your surroundings at all times because everywhere has crime it doesn't matter how they tell you how safe everything is and this is by no means supposed to cause you to be fearful i'm just telling you you have have to know these things to not fall into a certain statistics you know you want to be aware of it so just be aware of your surroundings research know what you're going to do don't be out there looking like a fool like don't be out there with the word target right here you don't want that you want to be confident even if you don't know boo you want to act like i know what i'm doing mm-hmm mm-hmm 
So you, you, you want to make sure that you have everything planned. But the most important tip that I can give you is to just do it. Do it, guys. Take that leap of faith. Have fun. There are going to be obstacles, but just do it. Try to speak with the locals. Caught a fish. Let me see. Record, okay? <laughs> <laughs> nice. I don't, don't, don't touch it yet. I won't touch it. Scary fish. What kind? Name? Uh, I don't know English <laughs> name. Okay. But Korean this name. Fish have poison. Poison yeah. fish. Oh. Yes, don't touch. Oh, I see. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. See y'all. Try to have fun, enjoy all the little things that come along with that experience because it's going to be an experience. And just, just taking the moment, even the small things, the small things from getting lost, the small things from not the, the cultural barriers and the language barriers, just enjoy it all. And most importantly, I hope from this video, you gain the courage to just go ahead and do it. Just step out your comfort zone, do it, take that country off your bucket list and have fun while doing it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. I hope you have enjoyed those tips. Go ahead and check out all my South Korea vlogs. Check out my lifestyle in Japan vlogs and I hope to see you next time. Don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on that post notification bell so you won't miss another video and I'll see you next week. Bye!